a three, a four by five card, and the rest of you are tiny. Thank you, though. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll start. So call to order. Ed? All right, are we good to go? Okay. Um, Ed, would you be, you know what? I will say the Pledge of Allegiance, just to make it easy. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Oh. Yes, we're standing. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. Joanne, may, uh, may I please have a roll call? Douglas Beebe? Here. Kathy Buckley? Here. Michael Hagedorn? Here. Ed Marin? Ed Marin? No, Ed. His, his mic is muted. No. Here. Christopher Michon? Crystal Palmer? Here. Nicole Pupor? Here. Mark Sand? Here. Colleen Stone? Colleen? Excuse me, did. Grant Decker. Here. All right. Uh, may it be resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education to approve the following agenda. May I have... Um, if you would like to motion, would you please be kind enough to raise your hand along with saying motion? May I have a motion, please? A motion. Who was that? Mike. Thank you, Mike. Um, may I have a second, please? A second. It's Mark. Thank you, Mark. Do you have any questions or discussion? No. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Noes? Abstains? Resolution passes. Um, we'll start tonight with our presentations. Um, our first presentation will be uh, teachers providing instructions. Our presenters are our principals. So I have them all queued up. Is there any principal that wants to go first? Gary, I, was, go. Thinking, go ahead. I was thinking mm -hmm. we could go uh, high school, middle school, and, and then either one of the elementaries. Perfect. Got it ready. Um, Matt, you just let me know when you want me to advance the slide, and I will do that. Sounds good. All right. So welcome everybody. It's good to see everybody's faces here. I know it's a little bit different, but this has kind of been what we've been doing. So it's kind of cool to do this with everybody. Um, so just kind of looking at what I want to kind of talk about today is just kind of giving you guys an overview of what we've all been doing um, over the course of distance learning. Kind of show you some numbers, some data, um, what the teachers are doing in the classrooms, what it kind of looks like, what our expectations are of our teachers. Um, and kind of overall, it's been, it's been actually for, I feel like it's been a huge success for our for our district, and uh, and really taking you know taking it forward has, has been has been great. You know, as, as a leader with with our, with our high school, it's been fun to kind of see this transition and work with our teachers, and then really stepping up to the plate, uh, and our kids stepping up to the plate too, which has been really really nice to see. Um, so the first slide, just looking at just kind of some of the you know the, the data points that I look at every day. Um, is kind of the first thing is obviously is attendance. I mean, attendance is definitely a big, a big as aspect of what we're doing in distance learning. 
Um, and what I, what I wish basically do for attendance is the daily attendance is based on our students making at least half of their daily assignments or classes. Um, so what we basically do is every period our teachers put up, put up an assignment by 8 a.m. every day. Um, the students have till 11.59 each night to go on and complete that assignment. They upload that assignment to Google, uh, Google Classroom. And then at the end of the next day, that teacher goes in. If that assignment is completed, they get credit for that, that assignment as well as they get credit for attendance for that day. Um, so as you can kind of see, you know, week one, we were at 94%, uh, week two, 95%, 0.66. And then this past week, we're at 95.07. Um, and that's students that are making doing the assignments for at least half of their of their classes in the day. Um, so that's really a really good sign that you know kids are getting on, kids are doing the assignments, and they're really working hard on the distance learning along with our teachers. Is there any questions about the attendance that we're doing? No questions. There appears to be no questions about attendance. Okay. Um, and it just kind of moving forward, you can kind of see Google Classroom. That's really what's driving our where our submissions of our assignments go. Um, it's driving where our teachers put those assignments, the interactive tools, the platforms um, for distance learning. And 100% of our, our our teachers are using those platforms. Um, and I go on those platforms. I'm a co a co teacher on those platforms, and I go in on a daily basis and, and be part of the, the Google Classroom. I'm part of the Google Meets with students, and I you know I interact with with that aspect of it too as well. Uh, just seeing the activities are going on, how the kids are responding, what feedback the teachers are giving. Um, so I'm really embedded in there, and 100% of our teachers have those Google Classrooms. 100% um, of our teachers are doing Google Meets, um, kind of like we're doing here. Um, really, the first goal that you know we talked about, you know, moving forward is really having that face-to-face -face interaction with our students. Is you know they're used to seeing our teachers, they're used to that interaction with that human interaction with our teachers. And it's important that we kept that. Um, so really that Google Meet does not really have to be academic based. It's more getting a pulse of your, of your, of your classroom. You know, meet with your students, seeing your students, how are they feeling, what's, what's new with them. Um, and you can also, in our teachers, a lot of our teachers are using it for that modeling piece um, for instruction too. But really the goal going into this was really having that face-to-face -face interaction with our, with our students. Um, you can see what our counselors are doing. Uh, we're still working at course selections. You know, we're in that mode of looking for next year, you know, working on the master board, looking at, you know, course selections for our students. Um, and we're open enrollment, so our students get to select what courses that they, they want to take for next year. Um, you can see in the past three weeks, we've had our counselors have met with 43 students uh, via Google Meet um, and set up their courses for next year. Uh, we've also had, you know, 71 interactions on Google Meet with our counselors. Uh, working on crisis, working on, you know, just making sure that they're there for our students that are that are struggling emotionally and socially. Um, so those are just kind of the, the big data points that I really like to look at on a daily basis um, that are kind of really important towards, you know, the academic success of our kids and the distance learning. Does anybody have any questions on any of those data points or? Okay. We can go on, we can go on to the next slide. So kind of the next slide is what really what really we're looking at for the next slide um, is the teacher daily schedule. So, you know, Dale, um, Duffy and I met prior to distance learning and really had, wanted to make sure that we had a, a strict schedule that looked at our teacher's daily schedule uh, and what that looked like for our teachers and really spelled it out. Um, part of what we wanted to do is we wanted to be flexible, though. We wanted to make sure that our teachers and our students, you know, we understood that, you know, there's there's families, there's there's students, there's kids home. There's, you know, daycares are not in session. So we want to be flexible for our teachers during that, during that time. So we came up with a procedure where they, each teacher has to have two hours of office hours a day. Um, and that's being available to their students. And what we have is a Google sheet that's on the district website that the teachers go in and they, they say that I'm available, say from, you know, noon to one. And then again, from four to four to five at night. Um, and they're available for the students for any questions they have on assignments uh, to help to walk them through it. They can do Google Meets. They can do phone calls. Um, so they're, they're interacting with those students for any questions they have on those daily assignments that they're posting to Google Classroom. Uh, also, during, during those office hours, we're asking teachers to make sure they're making contact with students that aren't handing assignments in, uh, making phone calls home, interacting with guardians, the parents, uh, and making sure that those students have everything they need to be able to do the distance learning and be successful within it. Um, we're asking them to track that in the in school tool under notes. Um, so that every teacher can see that a phone call was made to that student, um, what, what type of interaction that was, what the, the conversation was. So everybody's on the same page 
through this distance learning um, initiative. Uh, then we look at, you know, three hours of instructional hours. So that is where the teachers have three hours where they create the lessons, they upload the content to Google Classroom, they're providing descriptive feedback. And I think that's really the big piece that we were really, really focusing on is that descriptive feedback is really getting those teachers in there and giving feedback to our kids on the assignments that they're submitting to them on Google Classroom. Um, they added our the building principles to the co uh, as co-teachers in the Google Classroom. Um, and then they're really, really focusing on those kids that are, you know, aren't handing in those assignments. Um, you can see the Google Meet schedule at the bottom. Um, those are the ones where they're just kind of getting a pulse for their students. We want to separate it so there was no overlap between Google Meets with teachers. Uh, so you can see each day of the week has a different content area. Um, so that really gives you guys an idea of what, you know, our teachers are doing every day. Um, and they're working. They're, they're definitely, they're structured. They're getting on there. There's some wonderful lessons. Um, and you can kind of see throughout the rest of the slides um, here. You want to kind of just kind of go through the rest of them. You can see all the different things that are going on in our Google classrooms. Um, I've even embedded some links in there. You can even see a band lesson going on. You can see the actual videos of our teachers interacting with our students and how they're doing that through distance learning. Um, so when you guys have a second, you know, you have access to this, this PowerPoint, click on those links that are in the blue um, and just kind of see what, what some of the wonderful things our teachers are doing with our kids. Um, and having those, those you know, interactions, the authentic learning uh, type interactions with them. Um, and then just kind of moving all the way down, we still have, you know, virtual counseling. We talked about that with the counselors. Each one of them has a Google Classroom um, where they're posting. We're still continuing, you know, college searching. We're doing, you know, we're making sure our students are getting ready for college, uh, talking about, you know, what it takes, what things they need to do to get ready for college. Um, and those are going on all those Google Classrooms too for our counselors. Um, and then finally, we, do, we still have the virtual clubs. You know, we still have eSports, uh, you know, uh, Model UN, Fishing Club, Peer Connectors. They're still interacting with our kids um, during this distance learning as well to have that, that interaction, you know, outside of just the academic piece. Um, so that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview. The last two slides uh, kind of give you some pictures of our, 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 our teachers and our counselors and everybody at home um, interacting with the distance learning. Is there any, any questions? I know I kind of gave you a quick overview, um, but it's been very, I've been very happy with the, you know, the work that's been produced from our teachers. Um, they're on it, they're working hard. Um, and I, you know, I'm very impressed, not with only teachers, but our, but our kids really going on and, and taking this head on and, and, and doing a great job with it. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? And I can, and I can talk to you a little bit about like uh, grading is a little bit one of those things, too, that we're kind of looking at. Um, the end of third quarter marking period is Sunday. Um, so our teachers will be doing the third quarter marking period uh, grades um, this Sunday for Monday. Um, and part of that, we really want to make sure kids are successful um, and really communicating to our teachers that, you know, we're giving opportunities for kids to, to, to get passing grades and do well. They're trying. They're doing what they have to do and really focusing on and, and giving the students to do what, they, what they've been working for. Um, so I think yeah, that, that's a big piece too, is, is the grading piece and making sure these kids are getting credit for what they're doing. That's kind of just a quick synopsis of, you know, high school is a lot, a lot more going on, but that was kind of the, kind of the gist for everybody. Yeah, I think that um, grading in this particular time is really going to be um, sort of difficult because you almost want to weigh in that level of resilience that students have and that um, their ability to be flexible, um, to go with the flow, see this as an adventure instead of a crisis. Um, it really puts uh, students and faculty in a whole new environment um, or position. And um, I appreciate your thoroughness of looking at, at how uh, we can approach my screen keeps changing. I was just making eye contact with you and then I lost you. Um, how uh, each student approaches uh, this particular situation um, in, it, in their own way and, and how each teacher uh, is addressing those students in, in, to meet their specific needs, so. Yeah, and that's a big goal. I, we're making sure that we're meeting the needs of all those. Every kid, every kid's different. Every kid has a different need. And, uh, you know, through all these platforms and our counselors and BHSN and, you know, we're there. We're, we're in contact with kids every single day, you know, and it's it's yeah. been really cool to see you know, that interaction. You know, and, and that eye contact, it may, might not be face to face, but that eye contact with every student is so important. 
incredibly important. Um, it creates that sense of belonging and continuity within their day. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. Does anyone else have any questions or comments that they would like to make to Mr. Bazayo at this time? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Bazayo. You're welcome, everybody. All right, who's next? I believe that would be me. <laughs> I believe that would be me, the middle school. Can everyone hear me all right? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so thank you, Matt. Matt and I um, worked very <laughs> into the late evening hours on that Sunday, um, developing a plan in which we thought our kids would be successful and our teachers would be successful. Um, the focus right from the onset has always been to continue learning. Um, and But while acknowledging the challenges that came without traditional face-to-face -face classroom learning. So that, that was our main focus. So my presentation is really um, organized around the main goals um, that we, when we were developing that plan. So next slide, Gary. So our, our, the four overarching objectives for our distance learning have um, been the continuity of learning, um, having that flexibility, which Matt spoke about, maintaining that connection um, between students and teachers, um, and then also supporting the social emotional well-being of our students. Next slide, Gary. So um, we recognize we are asking students to become independent learners. And while some are ready um, at the middle school level to be independent le learners, others are not, and they require um, some supports. So as um, Matt mentioned earlier, each teacher has a Google Classroom where they post their agenda, their content, their assignments, um, and have discussion um, with their students. Some teams have gone as far as basically posting a um, daily map. That's what I like calling it for the day. Um, the sixth grade team, Team Base Camp, um, is the example in the bottom left-hand corner of, of that slide. Um, each morning, sixth graders get up, and, and that's what they see. They see an outline for the day. That includes each teacher's learning target, their daily objective, um, what assignments and videos or any other content they need to visit and to do for that day. Um, so that really helps those students who um, have difficulty with executive functioning and organization, especially um, at the sixth grade level while they're still developing those skills. Um, we have the office hours, which um, Matt spoke about earlier, where there are two hours each day. A teacher is available to their students, whether that is phone or via Google Meet. Um, also, teachers reach out during that time to specific students, so those offers, office hours are really meant for individual student needs. Um, there's a variety of platforms this teachers also use for direct instruction, um, like YouTube and Edpuzzle. You'll see those two things there um, on that screen as well in order to help support the students. Um, next slide, Gary. Um, Flexibility was another objective for engagement um, is for students and teachers. We, at, from the very onset, you know, my home life is very different than some other individuals. I have four boys, <laughs> so um, ranging from elementary to graduating this year. And so my time, my schedule is very different working from home. And we recognize that um, with our teachers and our students. So um, in order to cater to all the unique needs. Um, we had our teachers create self-paced lessons using a variety of platforms um, that the district offers to present content for students. But we also um, see that students can use these on their own at any time, um, and they could demonstrate their learning in a variety of ways. So they've used Flipgrid. Flipgrid's one of the more popular tools where they can video and take pictures and <laughs> put funny stickers on themselves, so it's engaging for students. We also have um, students using Padlet, basically an online discussion forum, so they can share their ideas, um, opinions, and comments on maybe a book um, or Actually, news um, is one of the ones I most recently seen. These platforms are ways for students um, to have an increased voice and choice um, in these platforms and allow students also to monitor their own pro 
progress. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see um, assignments. That's from our program Reading Plus that we just adopted um, this year um, through the Gear Up grant. And students are reading on that. They're answering comprehension questions. They're getting immediate feedback and they see their own growth. On average, we've had the students who are um, using that program, the average growth um, three three levels and so they're really doing it and you'll also see that the teacher um, provided me a snapshot of last week a hundred percent of the students completed their their assignments on reading plus so we're pretty proud of that and the growth that they're 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 showing on that program especially right now next slide gary um, one of the most important objectives for Matt and I as we were developing this plan, this framework um, for distance learning, is we wanted students and teachers to maintain connection and relationships. Um, so like Matt discussed earlier, the Google Meet um, once a week for each content area is meant um, for the teachers to connect and just check in with their students. Um, some of my teachers play games, scavenger hunts. Um, they, they field questions from their students. It's also been a great opportunity for students to share their pets. The pets, I believe, have become the stars of most of those mm -hmm. uh, Google Meets. But again, that Google Meet, the purpose of that Google Meet once a week um, is for them just to check in and connect with them and maintain those relationships with the students. Now, I, teachers do have Google Meets outside of that one meeting a week, um, so, but they're, they're sh they should have that one just to connect. Um, so I also use Google Meets. It's very important for the teachers to feel connected. Um, I have Google Meets with every team on Fridays and grade level teams. And we also have our front office team meetings um, once a week. We're, and I also meet with interventionists and our world language teachers once a week. So I have a lot of Google, <laughs> Google Meets um, each week where I'm connecting with teachers, checking in on them, and we um, discuss students who might need some extra supports and maybe who are struggling. Next slide, Gary. Um, we need to um, provide appropriate supports for our students um, to help process these events that are going on. Our counselors reach out um, to students via email, phone calls, Google Meets. Um, they've facilitated small group counseling. We have over 15 small group counseling sessions alone. Um, they have a Google Classroom for each grade level. Um, the counseling uh, counselors do, excuse me. Um, they've also developed SEL lessons um, for our students. So for instance, our um, 1211 and 811 special ed classrooms get an SEL lesson once a week. Um, our general education population um, gets an SEL lesson bi-weekly. This last lesson um, was about relaxation and grounding, and the counselor shared some strategies. We also did a stress, stress check, which you'll see on that slide, and um, that was the check-in. The students basically put themselves on that continu continuum there about if they were feeling relaxed, nothing bothers them, too stressed, overwhelmed, and anxious. And I'm happy to say that um, we've been able to communicate with those students who were uh, rated themselves as a 10 to check in on them and make sure they're doing well. So it's our way of just staying connected and informed about how students are feeling at this time. The counselors also have a corner in the newsletter. Um, and then additionally, which we're, this is exciting, um, the S CFES Brilliant Pathways Fellows, you might remember that we're part of the Gear Up Grant. Um, they're actually hard at work. We're the only school within the Gear Up Grant at this point, um, leveraging our fellows in order to help support our students so that we can get our mentoring program up and running again. Um, and they're also developing lessons they're sharing with the content area teachers that reinforce those skills of perseverance and agility. All that they've been um, working with our students on during advisory program. So now more than ever, it's important that our students see that what they've been learning, they can put into practice. Um, so they're working on those lessons with those teachers. Um, they're actually working on a very large project with Team Ascent, my seventh, eighth grade, my seventh grade team at this point. So we're very excited that they're able to continue their work. And they are actually um, 
<laughs> getting fellows from the other schools to help us with our work. So we have five times the fellows that we did before this all started. So we're very lucky to have their support. Um, next slide, Gary. We have a lot of awesome stuff going on in the middle school. And so it's really important that we tell our story. I'm sure you've seen my videos. I feel like I'm the new PR person in Acre Woman um, for, the, for the district news show. Um, so we have a strong presence on social media, Facebook, Twitter. We even have an Instagram page that Mr. Johnson facilitates for us. Um, we communicate through daily um, announcements. We've also started now emailing those daily announcements to parents and students. And we also have that weekly newsletter. So we're just, we just want everyone to know um, how strong we're doing in the middle school. We're really rocking it. Our kids overall um, are happy based on the results of that stress check and our discussions. Um, and we're con continuing learning, continuing those high expectations so that our students continue that growth that they need in their academic skills. So I appreciate your time. I tried to limit myself to five minutes, but it's hard when you have such a complicated project as this one. So are there any questions? Um, I actually do have one. I think it was on your slide number two. You were talking about, I think you called it platforms where students can um, interact with one another and discuss like a book or something along those lines. Um, just out of curiosity, um, um, is there any type of moder monitoring that the that the district is doing to make sure that our students are having appropriate interactions? Um, those are all interactions that are facilitated and over um, and the teacher watches and comments on, and so it's part of an assignment. So the teacher is the one that provides that oversight. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? All right. It looks like we're moving on to elementary. Gary, I don't mind going first if you want to load up BES. You got it. Ready to go. Hello, everyone. Um, you can go to the next slide, Gary. I just want to start by um, giving props to all of the staff I have in my building, the aides, the teachers, everybody has done an amazing job stepping up and helping all of our students through this situation. Um, it has been absolutely amazing to see how well everyone has come together and is supporting our students. Gary, go ahead. So I kind of started back to when it all changed on that Monday, March 16th. Um, go ahead, Gary. It certainly that initial morning, there was a lot of shock and awe by the teachers at about 930. I know Mr. Mannix came on and to the whole district kind of did our first live stream Google. And I stayed on afterwards with my staff and, and talked with them. And I think the first few hours, everyone was in shock that it was kind of, you know, stunning for them what we were going to try and accomplish and pull off in a, in a very short time period. There were a lot of teachers, especially in the primary level from pre-K three up to second grade who had not had Google Classrooms yet, um, who were suddenly, you know, thrust into trying to put that together and figure out how their students were going to be able to navigate that and the parents as well. And it was amazing to see what they were able to accomplish and how we were able to organize school uh, when it wasn't going to be in that traditional brick and mortar setting. Go ahead, Gary. Um, so like I said, everyone did step up to help ensure that this was a smooth transition. Um, I have to give a big shout out to the aides in my building. They have been really um, continuing day after day to reach out to me and ask, how can we support our teachers? How can we support our students? I have a lot of aides that are submitting read alouds for me to post into different classrooms. So that's been really um, nice to see from all of them, as well as the support that they're giving to each of the teachers on a day to day basis. You can go ahead, Gary. So what I wanted to point out are the things at Beekman Town Elementary School that haven't changed, even though we're not in the school building anymore. We're still doing our daily morning announcements. Mrs. Thu is putting those together and posting them for the teachers to put into their classrooms. We still have our foundations lessons going on, our small group reading lessons and math, 
Our interventionists are still providing our small group RTI lessons. So those are being put in place for students that may be working in groups of two or three and continuing their intervention support. We are still doing daily read-alouds at every grade level. I myself am doing some read-alouds that you'll see later in the slide presentation. We're still getting our STEM challenges. All of our special areas are still putting in place their classwork. Uh, there's daily art lessons. Ms. LaMontagne has certainly been very busy, um, not only helping students who are in crisis and you know having some breakdowns, but she's also doing mindful minute meditations daily. And there is certainly a lot of encouragement and support every single day. And you can see at the bottom, relationships are still at our core. And we're certainly trying to make it feel that way to our students and their parents as well. Go ahead, Gary. So when you go into a Google Classroom at Beekman Town Elementary, what are the things that you might see? Um, some virtual field trips to zoos and faraway places. There have been dance lessons and sing-alongs. Miss Bushy has done an excellent job with putting together a presentation on YouTube for our students. There's been STEM challenges. There's show and tell all the way down to the pre-K three level. There are the counseling lessons, the small groups, um, friends connecting with friends and mentors connecting with mentees. We're still trying really hard to work on those social emotional pieces now that we're away from each other because it matters now more than ever for sure. Go ahead, Gary. Some of the technology sites that our students are engaging with, you can see on this page. Most of our second through fifth grade students have been engaging with these throughout much of um, the school year already because those classrooms have Google Classroom set up. But for some of the kindergarten first grade classrooms, these are some new sites that students have been accessing and, and having experience with. You can change, Gary. So I wanted to try and give a good pictorial and let you see throughout some of this, some of the great things that are happening. Professional development is certainly happening every single day, um, more now than it ever has been. Seeing the different staff members reaching out to one another and supporting one another. Um, another shout out to our tech integration specialists who have been really the backbone of what we're doing and have been there, whether it's morning, noon, or night, people reaching out to them saying, hey, I'd like to do this, or I want to put this in place, and I'm not really sure how. And that has been absolutely amazing. And as Matt and Duffy had alluded to, you know, the admin team has been doing a lot of work together. We actually had an admin meeting with all of the principals in the North Country. Um, I don't even know what day it was when we had it. But it was great to be able to communicate with each other and kind of share what's working well, what's not working well. So there's lots of professional development going on now more than ever, and a lot of growth being seen. Gary, you can go ahead. Um, I have been trying to connect with my staff members. Um, one of the things that I want to make sure is that our staff aren't burned out by the time they get done this. And this has been a heavy lift that they've been really able to put in place pretty miraculously. And I want to just make sure that by the time they get done this, they're not burned out because I will say the first week and a half or so, there were some pretty, pretty tired teachers that had been really trying to get this up and running and, and had some long nights. So we've been trying to stay in touch as a faculty and use me as much as we can to help support one another as well. Go ahead, Gary. Um, I pulled this from uh, Rick Gingler had given me a spreadsheet the other day with the number of Google Meets. And in the last three weeks, Beekman Town teachers or staff have had 1,621 Meets, which is really quite impressive. Um, that number is not exact there. I'm sure there were quite a few times that it were people connecting with each other, trying to make sure that they knew what they were doing. Um, but that's a pretty impressive number with the number of times that our teachers are connecting with students and meeting with them. Um, on a daily basis. There are some teachers that have um, four meets that are scheduled in a day just to try and make sure that they're connected with the kids. Go ahead, Gary. So now I've got some pictures to show you. These were some STEM challenges. Miss Woodward, our um, technology teacher, has meets for pre-K to two and three through five where she goes on live with students and gives them Lego challenges or in that one picture they were building slime. So she's really getting them quite engaged throughout this. And you'll see in some of the next slides coming up that the other special area teachers are doing much of the same. 
Uh, this is actually some images from a pre-K three and four year old Google Meet. And if you think it's interesting to see a Google Meet with all of you trying to figure it out, you should certainly have <laughs> one you've got three year olds and four year olds who are trying to do this. It's some of the most cute that cuteness that you've ever seen, but it is certainly tough and exhausting by the time they get done their 15 minutes or so. You can go ahead, Gary. Um, this is Miss Lamontagne doing some of her mindful minutes. She was actually in a first grade classroom here that I had joined in with. And the students are pretty amazing at how quickly they've learned to keep their microphones muted and join when it's their turn um, to speak. And they've really adapted quite well to, you know, what's going on. Go ahead, Gary. Here's an example of Miss Poster. She's been doing some live Google Meets and posting to YouTube as she does drawing instruction for the kids. And I will say, I think this is probably one of the favorites by the students. And I have probably done six or seven of her meets and it's probably one of my favorite things to do as well. Go ahead, Gary. Coach Carter has also been doing live meets. Um, it's great the different activities that he's been posting for the students and the challenges and they'll comment underneath and let them know sometimes the pictures will the parents will send in cute pictures of them interacting and doing the different youtube challenges and exercise challenges that he's posting for them go ahead gary this is a great example of some of the reading lessons that are taking place. On the left is Kathy Steele in her house, and on the right is Liz Drazy. They team teach in fourth grade, and them, along with their aide, Miss Houston, were holding this author's purpose reading lesson. And it was amazing to see how engaged the kids were and how on point, and they really did a great job working through this. Kathy's husband did an awesome job um, putting up that makeshift shower board for whiteboard. I think that's in our dining room. So they've been very creative as to how they've adapted their houses for, you know, these teaching experiences. Go ahead, Gary. Um, as I was saying, I've been doing read alouds daily for pre-K three through second grade. And I'm also reading a chapter book to grades two and three. So these were just some posts that had been sent to me from the parents of kids that were engaging with my read aloud, which has been nice because I certainly do miss the kiddos a lot. Go ahead, Gary. We actually have 82 classrooms running at Beekman Town Elementary School. And the reason that's so much higher than the number of classrooms we have is because our interventionists are keeping their own classrooms as well so that the students can easily find their work that they need for them. You can go ahead. <clears throat> we also celebrated a virtual spirit week, which I think <laughs> is probably one of the most fun weeks that we've had so far. Um, we actually contemplated throwing around having a theme for each week because we really think that the students got engaged and had some fun and it brought about a little bit of um, smiles for the week that we didn't necessarily have on the weeks that we didn't do our virtual spirit week. So the next few slides, Gary, if you just want to go through them, um, just give you a quick snapshot of some of the fun with that the teachers are having and the students are sending in as well as they're demonstrating their their spirit. And then if you've heard of the 518 Rainbow Hunt, we've certainly um, had lots of fun engaging with the kids and having them create rainbows and way to display for our first responders as a kind of a way to hang it at your house so that those people that are first responders and essential workers can see it and kind of offer a little bit of hope. And a lot of the students really took part in that and enjoyed that. The little guy on the right is actually Steph Facto's son. He's in pre-K three and he was following along as teacher is on the computer, Mrs. Bell, and was walking him through that project as he completed it. So that was pretty fun. We are still continuing our mentoring that we're doing at Beekman Town Elementary School. We started this through the help of CFES and our mentors are still finding great ways to connect with mentees and being very creative. Um, on the right, you'll see Mrs. Bell was connecting with her mentee and they were playing a game of hangman together. Um, I had actually joined in on a classroom that was doing a Google Meet and they were playing a game of Would You Rather with one of their classroom aides and the kids were having a lot of fun with that. So they're really finding some creative ways to connect with kids and um, try and have some fun with them as well. We are also continuing our positivity project as well as our top 20 lessons with the students. We certainly wanna make sure that during this difficult time, we're helping them social and emotionally 
as well as you know helping to develop their character strengths along the way because this is certainly a trying time for them so we've been continuing those lessons in their google classrooms as well at each level And then, as I mentioned earlier, Miss Bushy is one of our speech pathologists, and she is an excellent singer. And she actually made a YouTube clip for our school based on our school song, which is Andy Grammer's song, Don't Give Up On Me. So in case you have not checked it out yet, you can click on that link and you will see her doing our school song with the kids. It was actually really great. There were some parents that had posted to our Facebook page and sent in images of their kids dancing and singing along with um, Miss Bushy, which was great. And then just recently we had shared um, a special little video that Chris Cabrera helped put together for us that had images of each of our staff members that wanted to participate put to our song as well. So if you click on that image, you'll be able to go to that video that he put together. And I've had a lot of positive feedback from students who are really excited and uplifted by seeing that as well. And then the last slide is our BES newsletters that we're publishing every Wednesday. So if you haven't had a chance to check those out, you can click on each one of the links and our newest um, newsletter will be released tomorrow. So there's a lot going on for sure at Beekman Town Elementary, a lot of teachers putting in a lot of time and a lot of effort to connect with our students, continue their learning, um, give them their lessons each day, but also making sure that they're connecting with them on a social and emotional level. Um, we are holding Google Meets every day. Some of them are being done two and three times a day. But one of the things we did notice at the elementary that trying to hold a lesson during a Google Meet was a little bit too chaotic. So we've turned to more of the videoing our lessons and posting them for the students to watch and then hosting the Google Meets afterwards so we can give some question and answers. And all of my teachers are doing office hours as well, so that way they can be there for the students to connect with them and answer any questions that they might have. Does anyone have any questions for me? I do have a question. I always have a question. <laughs> um, when, they re when they record their lessons and they can watch them, the students can watch it separately, um, does that allow them the opportunity to stop process and then continue? Yes. Yep. All right. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else have any additional questions? All right. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you. Darcy. Okay. I'm ready. You were the last. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Gary, can you put that to the, be the slide to the beginning? That's the last slide. Oh, my apologies. That's okay. There we go. Is that better? It is. Thank you. You're so, welcome. okay. So, the goal during our closure was to con is to continue to provide students with continuous learning opportunities as well as support their social and emotional health. As a district and as a school, we want to continue to remain connected to the community in this unprecedented time. So, this presentation will show you how we're meeting those goals as well as some areas that we're working on to find some solutions. So pictured here, you'll see a faculty meeting that I hosted two weeks ago. Um, all 72 members at once um, came to a Google meet. It was really great to see each other. So we're gonna, we'll try another whole group one soon, but until then we're, we've been doing a lot of small group meetings. Go ahead, Gary. So of course, I need to thank our tech integration specialist and project lead the way teacher, Mandy Dip Bishop. Um, first off, she's played a really integral role in providing on the spot training. She makes herself available 24 seven and our teachers rely on her to troubleshoot and teach us new tricks. And we couldn't have done this without the department of 21st century learning. So thank you very much, Carrie and your crew. Thank right. you. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Hey, our teachers have been working really, really hard. Um, everybody's contributing and doing their best. They're using Google Classrooms, Class Dojo, Google Meets. Um, like the others were saying, many of our students are already familiar with all of the platforms that we were using. It was the transition was smoother due to this. Um, I want to add that our 
our little ones weren't as accustomed to using Classroom, so they were using Class Dojo. One teacher reported that using Class Dojo was like Facebook for lessons. So her parents kind of caught on quickly. And I'll show examples of what that looks like in the following slides. Go ahead. Okay, so this is Class Dojo, which is the main uh, platform they're using in pre-K and kindergarten. So you'll see Miss Huber in her stream. She gives the morning a link to the morning announcements that I do. And then she also gives an update of when teachers can, or I'm sorry, when parents can sign up for a Google Me. And pictured over on the side is what parents see. And each child has their own little um, portfolio to submit their work. And you can see that one student is um, very happy to show his spelling words there. So teachers have been posting, read Allows and then students talk about their favorite parts and record and video and parents post to their student portfolio. Um, some teachers have scanned worksheets into edible slides and documents and they can collect, can collect work that way as well. So want to go to the next slide, Gary? Okay. So this has to be one of my favorite slides. Again, teachers are doing small group daily check-ins with Google Meets. This particular kindergarten student from Ms. Huber's class brought his brother along to the meet. The other young lady is Zara, a pre-K student. She's playing a show and tell game with Ms. Ogle. And again, we strive for daily contact with students to give them a sense of connections. And of course, our little ones need parents to help them connect. A lot of times they are on their cell phones or their iPads. But our wonderful teachers have been so flexible scheduling meets around parent schedules to meet the needs of all of the families. So this particular meet happened at 7.30 in the evening with the little guy with his baby brother. So we're really doing our best to um, meet the needs of our working families and stay connected. Next slide. So the upper grades are mostly assigning in Google Classrooms. Again, many of the students were quite comfortable with Google Classroom prior to the closure due to our strong digital initiative. This is an example of how a second grade teacher lines her day out for students. Students are given a special area assignment, math assignment, ELA, foundations, movement breaks, suggested times for recess and lunch. And in the blue, if you can see it, the teacher provides links to the lessons. And when the students click on the links, they can be brought to many different things. They could possibly see a Google slideshow to complete their math problems on, videos of a teacher reading a story or introducing a concept for the day, maybe a fun YouTube video using song to teach a new spelling rule. And teachers are also giving students opportunities using for enrichment and extra reading using Epic or Raz Kids Plus. Next slide. And again, just like at BES, our teachers are having regular office hours um, for kids that just want to kind of log in and have some extra help. So here you'll see our third grade teacher with Shayla. Shayla actually emailed her teacher and said that she needed some extra assistance with math. And Miss Holzer, um, it was on at 9.30 at daily time, so she was prepared for it. Um, Ms. Holzer worked through the steps on her board as the student follow, followed along. Participation in the Google Meets has been very high. Parents are reporting that students love to see their teacher and each other, and students attend the open sessions quite often, if not just to you know get extra help, but to see their teacher as well. Okay, next slide. These are pictures taken from our Cumberland Head Special Area Facebook page, which has a lot of traffic. Parents are contributing greatly to the page sharing. Um, they're showing what students are doing. Again, it's a nice way to keep everybody connected. And a dance-off competition actually started on this page, and the local news story picked it up, interviewing parents and teachers um, who participated in the dance-off. So it was really great to see. Next slide. Another example of pictures taken from our Facebook page. We have a student completing his PE assignment and then a family um, contributed to their library assignment. 
Okay, next slide, thanks. Here is just one of the many great lessons teachers are providing. Miss Colleen did, uh, um, sorry about that, but Miss Colleen did an activity with her students where they were to make a box using the design process. They had to use math skills and their ELA skills and students responded using a flip grid. I provided with you on that blue link, I can show you what a Flipgrid response actually looks like. Um, at the end, if we have time, I can show you a couple of the kiddos' responses. So this activity was very motivating to students. She had 100% participation, and it was so great because it involved like many of the different um, content areas all tied together. Next. We are also providing mental health support to our students and families at this time. Counselors are calling all students who are not logging in to participate. They've walked families through platforms and gave parents tips on how to keep students engaged in work. They also link families to our outside agencies such as BHSN. Uh, they're providing mindfulness activities and yoga exercises to help students remain focused and calm. We really certainly appreciate all they're doing for CHS and our school community. The blue link where it says Mindfulness Minute video, you can take a look at that later. Our top 20 lessons are still provided by the classroom teachers. I think we lost Darcy. I know she's been having some trouble with her internet connection at at her house. Darcy, are you still there? I think she's still talking. <laughs> no, I heard a symbol come up that she left the meeting, but she just joined again, I think. I haven't seen a symbol yet. I'll text her. I can advance her slides for her. I think she's close to being done. Yeah, I got the thing again that she left the meeting. Did you guys see that presentation that she's showing a slide like Sarah showed where her faculty, the, the, you can see the red line going around it, where her faculty posted a nice um, video of themselves singing to uh, somebody's, it's a pretty famous song. I forgot the singer, but. It, it was, um, so Ashley Kohler was singing, um, was singing the song, I believe. I'm and back. 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 <laughs> I'm oh, back, I'm sorry. Go. I'm here. Welcome back. I'm back. Can you go back one time for a little bit? Sure here? thing. Keep going. Do you want to go? Back Sorry, to where? That's, that's where we were. One. Geez, we just one we more. could have could have given you that help button before. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to add that our counselors are working really hard. Jamie Niles told a great story. She actually had to get in her car. With she got in her car and used her Bluetooth and was making phone calls from her Bluetooth and riding around the block so her children could just kind of sleep in the back seat of her car <laughs> so she could get some work done. So they're, you know, just like everybody else trying to manage working from home. So next slide, Harry. So we still continue to provide academic intervention and special services. We have reading and math interventions are continuing. We have Google Classroom set up for each of those. We're doing IP counseling, OTPT speech and IEP meetings as well. Next slide. We have some roadblocks. You know, we've had to work through those. Um, it was that, like Principal Paquette was saying, the rush to remote learning and just the shock of what was going on. Um, 
there's various levels of tech comfort, but due to our strong tech support, we're, we're closing the gap on that. And our student access to internet connection is also improving. You know, we still continue to work with our families who are, you know, still essential workers or, you know, just m balancing multiple students, multiple platforms. And we have to keep working hard to engage our hard to reach learners just as we would if we were at school regularly and trying to get some common grading practices. Um, again, that's that was also something we were working on prior to um, going digital. So, so we really want to stay connected to our community. I give a weekly update and our newsletter. I post daily announcements. I ask the um, community members to give me some Eagle Pride shout outs on our Facebook page. And I've gotten a number of Eagle Pride shout outs that I'm adding to the announcements daily. We do our faculty meetings, regular team meetings each week. I'm a co-teacher in all of the classrooms. And We've had our teachers in the press quite a bit. Um, Ashley Kohler, our third grade teacher, put together a really great um, video. It was a parody of a Taylor Swift song. It was on, I think it was on the Sun Community News. It was on the Press Republican. It was on WPTZ. So it was really great to see that. And our teachers are on their our own private Cumberland Head faculty and staff. Facebook page where they're posting funny videos and just talking with each other and keeping connected. So next one, Gary. Oh, and I guess lastly, I'll just end with we're trying to stay positive and stay healthy and stay strong. And we have some bumps in the road. We're, we're working through those. But overall, we've done a really great job. And um, staff at Cumberland Head, our aides, everybody's really pitching in and doing an awesome job. So anybody has any questions? That's great. Wow. Yep, yeah, excellent. I, I just want to say that- Mike had a question in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. What was your question, Mike? Um, I was asking any of the admin team. Well, first of all, I, I, I did, make a note in the chat that um, I'm very impressed with everybody's ability to adapt to the current situation. And, you know, um, Gary and I were talking the other day, thank, thank God, you know, we've, we were aggressive and, and going digital a couple, you know, a few years ago now. But um, in addition to that, uh, I was just wondering if anybody um, could comment on um, educating our students specifically on COVID-19 and, and, you know, it's certainly age appropriate, you know, different age kids, you're going to might talk to them differently about hygiene. And there's obviously some fear and how it might affect their families. And um, I just wondered if anybody would like to comment on that. Mike, I, I'd start, um, this is Dan here. I'd start with you might recall last board meeting we were talking about this and it was a, at the risk of sounding like an alarmist but we had been to every faculty meeting and talked about what i believe was coming which was exactly this but um, prior to that we were even sending out and it might have been jen parliament's idea like a weekly um health clip on and it's not it wasn't necessarily on covid but on like like a proper hand and sneezing hygiene um, in different ways to make sure that you're not spreading uh, germs. So that, I, and we talked about how, like I might, we might send something out on sneezing, but if, you, if you're teaching pre-K, you know, show the baby sh shark version of that. But if you're teaching, you know, high school, you might find a different version that gets into more of the science of it. So we were, we were on that, um, early and I'm not sure what's happened with that conversation since then but I, I was really um, I know some people thought we were alarmist but I know a lot of people took it serious I mean, thank you for that Dan yeah it was uh, you guys were aggressive about it and um, ahead of the curve I think um, also uh, feedback that I've received through CVS and other districts uh, we seem to be certainly ahead of all, a lot of the other, most of the districts when it comes to this. I think a lot of other people, I know we've had some, you know, some challenges at the beginning in our district, but, it, you know, compared to everybody else, you guys are doing stellar, really, really 
on top of it, and and it shows. If I could say something really quickly um, about the education of COVID, I know specifically for middle school, but also um, my involvement in the healthcare and the EMS um, community. Um, I think what I what I'm seeing a lot of from our teachers is really just reinforcing the things that we know about the disease that staying at home, although it is is not really exciting and we all wanna go do things that we've normally done. Um, that's what's gonna help um, get us through this. Um, I know teachers post a lot about washing hands and like the hygiene piece. And so I think I think now the, the best approach that we found is just communicating those known things um, because I think there's still a lot of unknowns with this and you know how long it's gonna be. And you know, kids are asking, how long are we gonna be doing this? How long is this gonna be going on? And so it's really just reframing a lot of that to um, what we know and that, you know, our families are doing the best that they can. Some parents have to work, some parents don't have to work, um, but we can control washing our hands. We can control staying away, um, using social distancing practices. Um, I see that a lot in, in teachers' presentations, just kind of those those three blanket reminders. Um, and so I think that's, that's how we're communicating that at the middle school level um, developmentally and trying to, to squash any of the rumors that kids are asking about or um, things that we know are kind of um, rumors or things that aren't, aren't necessarily true, um, but trying to be mindful that, um, you know, some families are more aware than other families about things um, and just trying to keep, keep it to the basics. Thanks, Mike. Um, I can tell you um, that people are starting to know individuals affected by this as um, as we're just starting to experience, as you know, at CVPH, more and more cases. Um, we're now up to 10 uh, admitted patients at CVPH, and I counted today uh, 19 um, positive cases that the hospital's monitoring. There's 10 in-house. There's a few um, employees at home and uh, that are positive, and um, I don't have those numbers right in front of me, but it was it was 19 that they were, you know, monitoring. Um, so I think some of the families are, and some of the kids might be getting scared uh, once they start knowing a friend of a friend or, God forbid, a parent. Um, so it's something that certainly we'll we'll need to continue address to address because I know someone, um, a family member as well, who's um, been afflicted and out of area. So it's, it's getting a little scary now. Um, and it's going to only get worse, I think in this area. And if I can just add, I know, um, Mr. Hagedorn, that's part of what we're trying to do too, is kind of head off that fear with some of, especially the elementary students. Um, you know, there was a student yesterday who said that his family was celebrating Christmas because none of them were going to make it that far. So I think there's a lot of families out there that need a lot of support getting through the mental aspect of this and being hopeful and following the recommendations and staying home and realizing that, you know, we're going to get through this to the other side. So getting into as many Google meets as we can with our students and really trying to see where those families are and who those kiddos are that are kind of getting into this gloom and doom mindset. And I think, like you said, it's going to get worse once we actually start having relatives and friends and neighbors who are positive and that fear level you know, seems to rise. So I know my counselors have been working extremely hard and the teachers are doing a great job sharing in, you know, spreadsheets of who we need to check in on and, and putting notes in and things so that we can try and get to everybody that we can. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. Um, I have, I have to say that um, from conversations I've had in the community, not up close, but from a distance, um, I will have to say that um, in my social circles, uh, I know a lot of parents that are really jealous of our district. I know it's a lot of hard work. Um, it's new for everyone, our students, our faculty, our administration, absolutely everyone. Um, but uh, they, um, my social circle is truly envious of our district and how amazing that we have approached uh, this potential crisis, we've we've approached it without fear. Um, we've been phenomenal role models for our students. Um, 
Sorry, I got to write Pauline's not gone. <laughs> um, and that um, in, in a time of such intense um, crisis and fear and turmoil, um, it's amazing how consistent um, our district has been with making eye contacts with the students and the families of our district. Um, and that I think that consistency is going to take our students a long way. And I'm just um, I'm so incredibly proud of you guys and so incredibly grateful to be a part of this. And I just um, I want to say thank you. So um, does anyone else have any more questions or um, comments that they would like to make concerning the presentations of our admin team? All right. Doug's back. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on. Um, next, we will have um, our budget, our 2020-21 uh, budget update. Our presenters will be Daniel Mannix, Superintendent, and Jennifer Parliament, Business Management Manager. Jen, do you want to start? Um, sure. So um, I am going to start with the new runs that the governor put out. Was that Monday? I don't know. I've lost all track of days. Um, so the new runs came out, and they were significantly um, decreased from what we were looking at previously. So... Our foundation aid actually went down $1.576 million. So a little over $1.5 million, um, less than originally stated in the, the first run. Um, so that is not good news. And on top of that, he has also left the door open for quarterly cuts. Um, so not only did we have a decrease, we also have to plan for future decreases that may or may not happen, but as far as Mr. Mannix and I are concerned, we have to plan for some kind of cuts. It, all, it will all be based on the revenue, the anticipated revenue versus what is actually received. And no one knows what that is gonna look like as far as cuts go, who's, how it's going to be designated, who's gonna get what kind of cut. It hasn't, it hasn't gotten that far yet. So when we put in that, the new numbers we're looking at, I know last time I showed you a screen, we were about $920,000 in the red. Now we're looking at about $1.4 million in the red. And, the, and then we have to consider the cuts that may or may not happen throughout the year as well. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot of good news, um, but this is what we're looking at at this point in time. And, and it is a moving target. This is this is, it could change significantly. We don't know. It could get worse, um, unfortunately. Um, but this is the way it's looking with the new numbers that were presented to us this week. Thanks, Jen. I'll take it from there. Um, you said basically everything we know right now. I'm going to expand a little bit on the this new le um, this new ability that the governor has to say to the legislators that we're revenues were short we're going to make not mid-year cuts which he's which has happened twice in our state's history uh once under his father and once under governor cuomo but now uh quarterly cuts and the um information we're receiving is that the revenues won't be there and that if you're not waiting to the very end on your budget you're making a mistake because one of the uh one of the cuts which should be announced right around May, uh, or one of the revenue forecasts uh, should be verified or or um, validated or whatever around May, and then you need to take that into account. And either your scenario gets a little bit better than what you you're forecasting, or it gets a little bit worse. So right now, we're about 1.5. Clearly, um, in the hole, if everything just turns out rosy from here on out, um, but we have to anticipate a number. And if I anticipate, if we anticipate another million dollars, that's about 13% of our state aid. Uh, it's a round number. It's a number to work with. Um, 
it's a number that can we can modify up or down. But one of the reasons why, Jen, can you turn off um, yeah. mute? Thanks. One of the reasons why we need to pick a number and, and go with it is we can't have at any one of our four schools. Um, we can't say, hey, we have to close down fifth grade or we have to close down algebra or PE for, you know, a year and, and let's find a place to keep these kids. So it's it's going to be um, difficult. We're going to we're up for, we're up for the task. Uh, we're here on the good days and the bad days. Um, and we're going to make sure that Beatman Town is the best it can possibly be. But we're 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 anticipating that this is going to be a tough road. The board should know, and some of you have been here before, that nobody um, likes cuts, and it gets it gets really t sad, um, and it sometimes it gets a little. Um, oh, sometimes a lot of people are very angry, and there's really nobody to blame except for the people that are right here on, on the ground floor. Um, but it's a very unique time, and, and we're going to um, go through this. I've have been talking with the administrative team about the scenario and I am looking for feedback uh, from them on what are the areas that um, that they look at if, if you know that they not that they can't do without no, I don't want to say that but if you know somebody said if push came to shove and I said push and shove are here so um, if push came to shove what 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 could we do what would we have to do without I also talked to somebody about uh, one of our administrators about um, about all the mandates and about all the requirements that the school this that the state of New York or the federal government put on us. And it's wonderful to sit in a building somewhere last year or year before 10 years ago and put a mandate on us. But when you don't fund those mandates, there's no way we can meet those mandates. So I know when I arrived, we a lot of people were talking uh, seven and a half years ago, eight years ago that we weren't meeting the PE requirements or the AIS requirements. But it, it becomes a battle of picking and choosing your your path that you think is going to be most beneficial for for our students, and and that's that, that's the task we're we're up to, and um, you know we're we're fortunate at Beatman Town that we have made great great investments in our facilities, in our infrastructure, in our technology, in our teaching, in our professional development for years, um, so. You know, we're we're ready. We're poised, as you can see, just by what you just heard. And we'll be able to still be great for our kids, even in this tough economic times. Is there any questions at all about the about where we are right now with the budget? Uh, Dan, if we were if we were to have to adjust the budget to compensate for any of that, um, how close to the cap will we get? Well, we, we've been at the cap mark the whole time. So um, the cap mark right now is like 276. Jen, is that right, 276? Yeah, she's shaking her head, yes. So we, we are at that cap. Anything over that cap would need a super majority. Oh, okay. um, I thought for some reason we were just under, but I guess we're not. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I do have a question. Um, the rules are once we've had a budget pass that we cannot alter our budget. So if New York State is altering our funding, then how are we going to alter our budget? That's that's why I'm saying we have to anticipate. Um, you can't. You can, you can't increase your budget, um, but if the New York State says they're not going to give you your state aid, you're not going to get it. So you would have to decrease your expenditures, which is which means, I mean, mm -hmm. if, like if we're going to be, we're very well, we're going to be at no equipment, like no new equipment this year, right? Mm -hmm. And we, for years, we've built up our equipment lines. Um, you're looking at, you know, no, no. P professional development in in the budget. Now you might have some because we have grants. You know, we talked. Sarah talked about some grants. Uh, Duffy talked about some grants. So there may we've been we've been doing a great job writing grants. Hopefully those grants continue. And there's a lot of PD in those, and that's what's kind of put us in a in a really good position. 
But when you take away all those other things, then you're really talking about the only thing left to cut are people, which is sad and frustrating. And um, but it's a situation that we're being that's being forced upon us. Dan, ha having had this experience with us ramping up with the digital learning, um, is there any way to circumvent cuts by leveraging our experience with digital learning now? I'm not sure what you mean, Ed. Well, there might be there might be avenues that instead of cutting uh, certain things that maybe you could leverage the overhead through the digital learning component in some fashion that otherwise wouldn't be able to. Well, we, I'm certainly anticipating that digital learning um, is going to be expanded in New York State. When I hear Governor Cuomo, he says it's not, some people might think this is a storm that will pass and then we'll all just pick up our pieces and go back to where we were. Uh, Governor Cuomo is not forecasting that. A lot of other people are. I don't know who's right or wrong, but one of the questions he asked is why, you know, why weren't we ready for, he called it tele-education. <laughs> so, um, and I will was happy to know that we, you know, we were really pretty close to being ready. We, we weren't shocked or surprised for the most part. Um, but I don't still understand what, like how to leverage. I don't, I guess I, I understand um, digital teaching and learning really well. And I understand the finance side of it, but I don't, I don't understand the nexus that, that your question is bringing to the table. So I can't answer it effectively. Yeah, it's more of a open, you know, to have some, just have it in the back of our heads that going forward, if instead of cutting cutting a program for some reason, then maybe we can leverage it with either our district or the other districts and still leave the the certain certain classes available through digital learning in some fashion. Oh, oh, so and if you're talking programs, I thought you were talking people because programs may may be able to work like that, or or maybe maybe potentially people, depending on what's uh, what's allowed at the state level. Um, but I, I didn't understand how you were saying. I didn't understand in terms of cutting people. No, but even 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 people, because you know, the, the there might be something that says that something's considered uh, not a mandate, but that doesn't mean that we can't then shift that person into another mandated function that still allows us to use them in a broader spectrum. You know, that's all. It's it's an interesting concept. Um, we do have shared services. We've had shared services with other districts, it may be a time to really um, fine tune that and, and, and broadcast that, um, you know, with, uh, and that would increase that, that wouldn't be a cut, that would increase revenues where people could, could pay to be, um, to be in our, in a particular program. And I know our special education has done that well. So I shouldn't just say cuts too, because um, I did, we were talking with assistant superintendent Taverny and um, you know she's looking at ways to increase revenues too. So if you bring in more students in pre-K or more special education students in pre-K, you can probably get a higher reimbursement the way things are now, which could bring in more revenues. And every time you have more revenues, that off you know that's where we will be. That will offset a potential um, cut in a person. Right. So, right. And and, and 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 exactly. So. So if you do, let's say you do bring up more revenues by offering a, a class that other districts can join through some of our teachers um, that isn't already available to other districts, and then you can still keep those those teachers by offering that with different with other yeah. districts. It's a it's a wonderful idea. They'd have to, of course the other district would have to join and pay for it. Well, of course. <laughs> All right. And, All right. and that's difficult because they're in the same position we're in. That sure. that's sure. where my mind went. You know, they are they are all but they, may, they might it might be the only option because it may still might be cheaper to to have even a mandated component they can't otherwise afford it, you never know hey, listen never know. everything's on the table here we're gonna we're gonna do our best to make sure that we have great programs for our kids there's you know us you know that mm -hmm. Dan, i have a question okay um it may be way too early to address this or or but you kind of made reference to it is um it seems likely that we're going to have some layoffs um is that is that an appropriate or is that an accurate statement we are definitely anticipating that um we're not 
we're not anticipating great news on the revenue side. We know we're 1.5 in the hole. If all of a sudden the skies opened up and the governor said, hey, you know, we just had a windfall because we're back to work. Um, we're not anticipating that. That's the only way that we have a scenario that doesn't include people. So that would be for an entire budget season. And what CVPH is talking about is not laying people off, but but doing what they call a furlough. So those, is there a similar mechanism in teaching where you wouldn't, um, you know, lay those teachers off or those, those uh, positions off, um, but you'd have them, you know, knowing they can come back as soon as we get our a new budget year. Right. So there's a, that's a complicated question. So, and it gets in, involved with tower law because back in 08, there was a budget crisis um, for hospital for everybody, schools yeah. included. Most of you remember that here at Beatman Town, but um, it was the same Governor Cuomo that um, furloughed, that just mandated furloughs, I believe, and, and he mandated a couple other things, and um, people did it because it was it was the governor, and he was he was saying, you know, I'm the boss, you can do that. But then there was a there was a case which I, I believe it revolved around the uh, the furloughs and the the <clears throat> the reduction of benefits that were granted the employees under Taylor Law and under collective bargaining component of Taylor Law, and that cost the um, New York State government uh, they lost a seven million dollar case on that. So it's a unique method. You'd have to right now, as everything stands now, if Taylor Law stays in in effect, um, you would have to negotiate. Uh, for furloughs, but then you'd have to figure out a schedule that would work with furloughs. So if you're talking like sometimes furloughs is you're working four days a week instead of five days a week, right, Mike? Yeah. <clears throat> um, you'd have to figure out how that works with a master schedule for all the kids and the principal. So it's, yeah. it's a great conceptually, um, but it's hard to put into practice. Yeah, yeah. One thing that we should be thinking about uh, I know in that same economic crisis, um, there was a early retirement incentive um, provided by the state, and I haven't heard anything, but we're, I'm pushing on it at the state level. <clears throat> and um, I know that that saved almost a billion dollars, uh, and it would be great to see that again, because we have a lot of teachers, a, a fair number of teachers, who would be very enticed to know that they could have one or two years of credit time and then and then retire. So Beatman Town could, could um, save on that if, you know, but the one thing is if you did, if you did, um, if you had somebody take an early retirement incentive, even if it wasn't the state level, say it was a local level. And I have some of those, I know what those look like. I've written those before. Um, they only really save you true dollars, big dollars, if you don't replace that position. So if you, if you, you were to, um, have somebody who is making $88,000 with a family plan um, take the retirement incentive. And there's a cost, there's an expense for that. And then another person comes in making $62,000 uh, and they might have a family plan too. Your breakage is really um, not even, you know, not even $20,000 $20, by the time you add in your other expenses. So, it's when you don't replace, when somebody leaves and you don't replace them, then you really um, gain that whole amount of FICA, TR, the retirement system part, part we pay every year for every employee, the health insurance if they're taking it, and of course the, the salary. So that's something to keep in mind when if people leave and, and retire for an early retirement incentive, it's not great unless we're ready to take the, it's, it's good it, and it's, it, it can be helpful, but it's not great unless we're ready to take um, the attrition along with that. So that's another thing that might work more than furloughs. Thank you. I just wanted to know what we're looking at or, you know, have a little look into the future. Mr. Mashad, I think, had a question. You're muted. I didn't have a question. I was just cleaning my eye. Sorry. <laughs> well, don't touch your face. 
Alrighty. All right. Do, are there any other additional questions for um, Mr. Mannix or Gen Parliament at this time? All right. Um, seeing that there's none, is there um, anything additional you'd like to add, Mr. Mannix? Yeah, I would be a little remiss if I didn't say a couple words about what's happening here at Beatman Town outside of that wonderful budget news. Hmm. So besides good evening, I do hope everybody's well, and I hope the people that are um, um, logging in through the telephone are safe and well, too. First and most importantly, I have to thank everybody. I wanted to start naming them through administration teacher aides, but I know I'd leave somebody off because it's the whole community here at Beatman Town that's making this work. Our drivers, our custodians, I can't, I, I know I didn't name somebody right there. So I, I have to thank everybody at the Beatman Town Central School District, every employee for being everything that they can be to our community. And, and that, um, message that we, we sent out on that Monday um, after we closed school on that on that Sunday, uh, we did ask everybody who was paying attention to be everything they can be to our community because at the end of this there's going to be winners and losers. There's going to be people looking how did this how did this entity with resources, human resources, uh, uh, financial resources, uh, educational resources, how do they do for our community? And right out of the gate, I got to give kudos to absolutely everybody because uh, we're hitting it out of the park. Um, and folks, what you're seeing here is not normal and it is not happening in many, many other places. So this is uh, fantastic. And again, it is not normal, but it is really, really impressive. Uh, some of the impressive components, let's talk food delivery for a second. Um, our cafeteria staff, our aides are working there, our drivers. That's led by um, our supervisor, Roxy Barnes, and Jen Parliament, Jim Chauvin helping with transportation. But we are first out the door with food. We are first in homes with food. Um, and we, I believe, are doing just a fantastic job and the best job we can possibly do. And we keep getting more and more families. We're delivering, on average, per day about, um, is it 12? Is it 2,400 meals, Jen? And that, yeah, 2,400 meals per day. Outstanding. Um, going back to the education that the principals just uh, talk so passionately about, uh, I can't thank everybody enough. The 21st century learning, the staff, the admin, the instructions in that meeting, uh, that, that prelim meeting that um, was our first Google Meet uh, district wide. We asked that everybody keep connections with kids. We knew that kids were going to be in tough situations. And we knew that the wonderful staff, the family that we have at Beatman Town was going to be the, the best thing our kids can see uh, day in and day out. So we asked for connections and we asked that we weren't just giving blanket work, busy work. We wanted to make sure that the work was meaningful and that the kids were receiving feedback from all of our different wonderful employees. And we also asked for a block of education that was sustainable and fair and it wasn't something that was necessarily easy for the adults and easy for the kids but it was education and education normally isn't easy um normally there is a, a, a struggle in education and that's part of the learning process sometimes um and i think we've really done a wonderful job balancing um and and hopefully we fine tune that and keep differentiating and providing what each individual kid uh, each individual student needs uh, during this crisis. I was disheartened that the governor took away our vacations. But what I said to everybody who's been willing to listen to me is maybe, just maybe, there's a silver lining in this. Is we go through maybe the worst time in our in the history of America, or maybe the worst time since the Civil War, where our students are going to have some of the most caring adults in their lives checking in on them every single day. And I mean that. I think you can hear that in my voice. So there is a silver lining for no vacations for kids and families and uh, teachers and administrators and everybody. Um, it's that we're going to stay connected during this really difficult period of time in our, our history. Um, I remember going to FETC with Pauline, Mike, Gary, Kathy and Ed, you were on the board. Um, that was one of the launching pads for what we're doing today. That was six years ago. I remember saying we want to be on the right side of digital education. Uh, we're on the right side of it. We're ready. We're, 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 we're moving forward and our kids are benefiting from it and our community is for sure. Um, we're going to be now out until the end of April. 
um, during this time. We're going to continue to um, do everything we can for our school community. Um, just bear with me here. I just want to bring up a couple things. Uh, we have, um, we are working and using um, expenditures from grants to build face masks with some of the grant funded material, uh, grant funded 3D printers, laser cutters. And those face masks are going to have been given to CVPH. I have some in the back of my car. I'm bringing over tomorrow morning. And really tomorrow we will go full, full throttle to start giving at least face masks, maybe mask, maybe goggles, maybe thermometer um, caps to our first responders to CVPH. I know that some kids are involved. I know that there's teams of educators looking at this. Uh, Beatman Town is gonna specifically be a regional hub for this. Um, we are using district resources. And we're using these district resources to help kids learn that in a time of need, you need to be everything for your community. Um, and we will be that. Uh, we already went through our budget. Um, there's been a number. Oh, another thing that you may hear about. Um, I think it will be tomorrow. If not tomorrow, it'll be Thursday. But 21st Century Learning has, uh, and the business office has worked with me uh, as I had a request for to bring some buses to Peru to, so Peru kids and families can have Wi-Fi because we have Wi-Fi at our buses. So I look forward to jumping on a bus and driving over to Peru and giving the keys to our buses to Superintendent Palmer and letting Peru benefit from the foresight that we've had and the grants that we've obtained. Now, uh, Peru will be responsible for any damage and they'll be responsible for the data, but it's the, uh, it's the, it's what we have now that other folks don't have. Um, and we're just sharing that many, many, many new laws. I can't list them now have been, um, have been adopted and they've totally changed the landscape of everything we do. And we're staying on top of those. It's, uh, it's, it's difficult, but um, if we make a mistake, we'll fix it. Um, as you probably heard, Regis exams were canceled. Um, it actually looks like State Ed did, did really um, made a bold move, but the correct move there was really good to see. Our APPR evaluations have been canceled, but that's a legislative priority. But you just heard from our principals about the evaluations that they're doing every single day when they're in there supporting our teachers. You're, you're always evaluating, you're always looking at the great things they're doing. We call it looking for the pony all the time. And if you do see something that they need to enhance, we bring it to their attention. Our 338 testing is, has been, um, has been um, put off too, which is probably really good news as that testing is usually more difficult than even our regents exams. And we do that to our youngest kids, which I still can't understand. Um, we've been given great grant flexibility at, at the federal level. And we're taking, we're taking that flexibility and using that to help support our community for sure. And we've given great special ed flexibility. And I know that our um, assistant superintendent is aware of that and is making, um, still holding meetings, digital meetings and, and doing what she can with that flexibility to give the kids what they need. So really confusing time, really difficult time, but an amazing time to be in my shoes and watch the family of Beatman Town uh, come together, support each other as educators and support each other as a community. And uh, we won't stop. This can go on as long as it wants. We won't be deterred. We're going to keep moving forward. We're going to be great. And when this is all said and done, um, I want people to remember that we were here in so many ways for everybody. Thank you. All right. Does anyone else have anything that they would like to add or any questions that they have? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, Jen, did you, Jen Parliament, did you have any other comments or questions that you would like to add? Um, yeah, some of it I'm going to reiterate what Dan said, but um, I really want, you know, the administrators got to talk about what they're all doing, but there's a lot of stuff still happening at school that I think you guys should be aware of that's going on too. And the food service is obviously huge. Um, it's been a huge undertaking. And working with Roxy and her crew and all the monitors and aides and everybody that's come in to help her has been phenomenal. The support for the food delivery is wonderful. The transportation department has been wonderful. Um, Gary and his department has been wonderful. They get the word out for us if there's a change. Um, it, like I said, it's been a ton of work. We, we are constantly updating our 
uh, transportation spreadsheet as to different routes and manipulating it and changing it to make sure no route is too long, that they're getting their food on time. Um, so it, the cafeteria and the transportation department have been phenomenal, working their buns off. Um, can't give them enough kudos for what they've done, really. Um, and then Dan Noonan with his crew, he's keeping them going. He's keeping the cafeteria clean. He cleans it for us every single day, make sure that gets done. All the bathrooms that are being used there too, make sure everything's being kept sterile and clean, doing a phenomenal job. They've also started doing some outdoor work because the grass doesn't care about the coronavirus, so it's coming up whether we like it or not. Um, so they're working on that stuff independently so they can do the work outside alone. So they're, they're we're keeping, trying to keep everybody as safe as we possibly can. Um, everybody in the food program in the transportation department also wears masks and gloves and has been phenomenal with the social distancing and doing everything we've asked of them. Um, and then we at the business office are also keeping extremely busy as well. Um, payroll is going off without a hitch, knock on wood. This will be our second payroll done from home. Jen and Marissa are working 99% from home. Um, Jen Stahl is also working probably about 80% from home. She still has to come in for a few things. She has to get bills from me that I'm preparing and um, do some deposits and, and things like that that you, you have to come in and at least get a few things for. But um, everybody has been absolutely wonderful. Farrell has now is starting to work from home, doing some purchasing from home as much as she can. Um, but we are trying to keep up with everything as far as purchasing, receiving, making sure everybody gets what they need. We've also done a lot of different deliveries for textbooks and Chromebooks and Khajiits. And we're going to start delivering some shampoo and toothbrushes and toothpaste for middle school. And we're just trying to keep everybody everybody's spirits up and do what we can for the community as well. So I just want everybody to know that there's a lot of things still going on in the background too, that we're trying to keep everybody supported and ready to go. All right. Excellent. It's all hard work. <laughs> all right. Um, so do we have any more questions or comments? All right. Um, seeing that there's none, we will be moving on to our next um, report, which is ex officio student board member Grant Decker. Hi, so I just have a little presentation that um, talks a little bit more, I think, about mostly what Mr. Bazio already said. So, uh, distance a lot more, so some more on distance learning from uh, my perspective. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, how it's been working. So teachers have been hosting their classes through uh, Google Meet software online. And then the links to these classes are posted within the Google Classroom that uh, the district has had for the last few years. So students already know how to get there. Um, it's really not a challenge to access Google Meets. And then in addition to the video meets, uh, teachers have been posting this their work on Classroom um, in like PDF files or Google Docs so students can keep working on them. And again, since, our, uh, since the district has had the Google software classroom and work uh, working for so long, students already know how to do it from home. And then homework is, at least for me, uh, <clears throat> for calculus, homework is being being submitted uh, via email and it's really easy and seamless. And then at least uh, for calculus, again, uh, teachers can give feedback to email questions and that's uh, they're especially accessible, obviously, during their posted office hours. Uh, Mr. Lambert, next slide, please. So then uh, an average day. <clears throat> so uh, the typical schedule on the left, I pulled from a friend of mine who is also a, a senior. So he has uh, AP Lit at mon on Mondays at 11 in the morning. And then he has college forensics Tuesdays at 11 in the morning. Statistics on Wednesdays at uh, one in the afternoon. Uh, he has economics and government. I didn't get the time for that. And then for a gym, uh, for everyone actually, uh, gyms every other day like it used to be. But now there's a daily fitness log, which you fill out um, on the day of. And uh, uh, <clears throat> the PE department's been really, really great putting together Google Doc of like at home workouts that you don't need equipment for. And um, they still they're really effective. And then they also post some ed polls assignments not usually be on like a sport. Um, so just students learn about like lacrosse or football or ultimate Frisbee, something like that. And then uh, some other classes, some classes that I take. Uh, so AP Calc. 
Uh, I have that every day at 10. Like you said, uh, Mr. Pizzaio, some teachers are doing uh, more meets than just one a week. So Mr. Lucy is doing them every day at 10 in the morning. Uh, and then there's also Spanish 5, which I take, and that's Fridays at 10.30. And then uh, last slide. So, yeah, just personal experience. So I have calculus at 10 in the morning. Uh, and then I have New Visions. We use uh, Zoom, but it's more or less similar to Google Meets. Uh, also, we use Microsoft Teams, but it's the same kind of video conferencing platform. Use uh, Work Online, Google Docs, all that. And then I have Spanish coursework on the Google Classroom every day. Um, and that that's an example of like the attendance that you talked about. Um, he takes attendance with that daily coursework. And then uh, aside from, since I know you guys put a lot of emphasis on uh, not putting a lot of busy work into students' lives during this kind of social distancing quarantine, um, it's a really great time to go uh, running or do exercises. Uh, I've been doing a lot of running and you can put them on the daily fitness log for gym, or even there's a lot of time to just do the fitness log uh, activities that are posted on the doc in the gym Google Classroom. And then, uh, like Mr. Bazaar said once again, um, extracurriculars are still in effect. So, like, just today at 3 o'clock, I met with my senior class council today, and we talked about, like, the senior banquet and end-of-year activities. And that's it. So, does anyone have any questions? Grant? Um, I have no questions at this time, but it's really nice to see your smiling face. Grant, Grant I do have Thanks. a question. Um, your peers, do you... Uh, do you feel, do you know if there's any uh, resistance to wanting to attend the Google Meets or does everybody feel like it's just par course and everybody kind of participates anyway? Yeah, I've more or less, it seems to me like everyone's pretty much at ease with the Google Meets experience. I don't think anyone's been super uh, reluctant to do the, the platform. Good, good. Good to hear. Thanks. Are there any additional questions or comments for Grant? Hey, Grant. <clears throat> um, yes. Principal Bazayo and I are, if if this lasts and there isn't a, um, in, there isn't a, the end of the traditional school year, um, which could happen, right? You've, you've, you've been right, talking. Right, yeah. We, yep. yeah. Um, we're working hard on coming up with the best graduation under the circumstances we can for you. So um, we'll get student input, but we're going to make sure that you guys are, uh, celebrated for what you've brought to beat in the town for years. So don't worry about that. We, we got you covered and with the top 10% uh, recognition. Yeah, I, I did see the uh, the email for that, that regarded that if this goes through the end of the year for graduation. And yeah, I saw that. Good. All right. Any other comments or questions? All right. Great job, Grant. Thank you. Moving on, we are going to um, consent agenda uh, four for minutes. May it be resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education to approve the following minutes. May I have a motion, please? A motion. Thank you, Mike. Crystal, second. May I have a second. Thank you, Crystal. Crystal. Did you get that, Joanne? She's muted. Yeah, I'm going to write it down just in case. Hold on, give me a second. I'm good. OK. Um, is there any questions or discussion? Seeing that there's none, all in favor? Aye. 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 OK. Good job on the thumbs up. <laughs> um, any no's? Abstains? Resolution passes. May it be resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education to approve the CPSE CSC 504 recommendations dated 4 7 2020. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Pauline. Second. May. Oh, who was that? Mark, second. Mark seconds. Any questions or discussion? No. Excellent. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Noes? Abstains? 
Resolution passes. May it be resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following resolutions on this consent agenda, appointments and retirements, be and are hereby approved. May I have a motion, please? A motion, Mike. Mike motions. May I have a second? Second, Pauline. Thank you, Pauline, for the second. Any questions or discussion? No. Thank you. No. I'm taking so long because it actually, there's a little bit of a delay and a lag. So I just want to make sure that um, everyone gets an opportunity if they want to. All right. Seeing that there are no questions, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Um, nays? Abstains? Resolution passes. Moving on to number seven. May it be resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following resolutions on this consent agenda, 2019-2020, revise school calendar, the 2020-2021 budget calendar, and rescind annual district meeting resolution, be and are hereby approved. May I have a motion, please? A motion, motion. Mike. Mike. Okay, motion on Mike. May I have a second? Nicole, I'll second. Nicole will second. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussion concerning this? No. No. All right. Ex excellent. Thank you, guys. Um, since there are no questions or discussion, may we have an all in favor, please? Aye. 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 Excellent. Any no's? Abstains? Resolution passes. All right. Mr. Mannix, is it fair to assume that being that we are on um, um, an potentially uncontrollable media that um, we will not be having an executive session this evening. Yeah, that's, that's correct. All right. Um, all right. All right, so moving to number 10. Did we hit number eight? Let's double check. Um, I don't have number eight. Oh, maybe, maybe I have an eight. Can you see it's on, the screen. it's on the screen? Yeah, look at the screen, Kathy. All right. Let's see if I can blow this up. Mine is about the size of a thumbnail. <laughs> Ed, do you have resolution eight? Yes, yes. Could you please read it? All right. So there, it's actually not a resolution. We're looking at additional items at this point, and it's covering uh, uh, the tenure statuses and the policies uh, that have come up, most of them because of the current issues with online course and uh, corona and safety plans. That, that's all in the portal, of course. All right. Um, that's why I could not find number eight is I was looking for red. I have no red. <laughs> okay. So um, is there any questions or discussion concerning additional items? No. 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 Okay. No. Um, is Mr. Mannix, is there anything that you would like to add concerning these? I just wanted people to be aware. Uh, those were given to us at the beginning. A lot has changed since the beginning of, of this whole adventure. Um, but some of those will be modified and changed, and we will need to, uh, down the road, adopt some, some um, new policies. And the tenure status is going to come into play for a number of people since we've been out and 
and then also we have the the potential reduction that we talked about in staff okay um actually i do um i do kind of have a, a question and it's um not a very happy one um but uh, being that we are not at the peak of this health crisis at this time, um, chances are we are going to um, have students that are affected in a very um, unfortunate and um, disheartening way. Um, do we have um, a, it's part of the pandemic plan, um, are, we, are we planning to, uh, have specific ways to support those students that may be struggling with um, loss of family members and sure. things like that. Sure. So we would just rely on our wonderful uh, crisis mm -hmm. team, which has a one. We have a wonderful crisis plan. A lot of you have been involved in those situations before. Um, it's nice because they are still there. That team, all those members are utilizing. Um, the ways you've already heard on uh, staying connected with our kids. So there won't, you know, there, there won't be any apprehension to reach out to our kids and families uh, when that happens. Uh, I would tell you to give thoughts and prayers. We have three members of our school community that are, um, that are, that I know are battling this. Um, so it must be very, very scary for their families. Uh, very, very scary for those three people. And um, our thoughts and prayers go, go out to them. And, but we, we do stand ready to support um, it more, than what we're, more than what we're supporting now. We stand ready for the, the other types of supports that students may need. All right, excellent. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments? All right, seeing that we have none, um, we will. Maybe let me, let me add, I just want to add to that. Um, okay. I got a phone call the other day from a teacher and what she's planning on doing with the group, maybe a large, large group is trying to find ways to support all the people that are in the hospital. Like Mike just talked about because mm -hmm. you're there alone and you're there um, by yourself or those kids that are their dad may be there and they can't go see their dad or their mom or whatever. So we have a team um, or we're building a team at Beaton Town uh, that will help support uh, those, those people that are battling COVID-19. Um, they they may, may, may not be in that last stage that you talked about, but they, they're certainly in a desperate situation. So we have people right now, I think there's going to be a message going out tomorrow to a whole, a whole group of kids that will be, being more for our community than you probably could realize. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when we turn the kids loose on this type of positivity project. It, it could be, it could be wonderful. I'm anticipating it will be. So we're ready. We're ready to support the community and families in a whole bunch of ways. All right. Excellent. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments? All right. Excellent. Um, may it be resolved that the Board of Education adjourn our very first Google Meet um, meeting. May I have a motion, please? Kathy, I think you need to establish clerk pro tem. We're not doing executive session. Okay. So we don't need to do that one. But thank you for watching. I appreciate that very much. Yep. I will give a motion then. All right. Mike motions. May I have a second? Second. Second. Chris. That was that Christopher, was that you? Yes. All right. Thank you, Christopher. Do we have any questions or discussion concerning this? All right. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. No's <laughs> abstains. This meeting is over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Um, it was definitely an experience, and um, I am absolutely thrilled to be um, in this awful time, but still be a part of this. Absolutely. Thanks, Kathy. And Good night, every everyone. Everyone has been Take care. absolutely Great thrilled. to see you guys. We'll do it again Good in a few weeks. Yeah, I'm not quite ready to hit the off button. <laughs> <laughs>
This, this is like the most social contact I've had in days. <laughs> <laughs> it's really sad. I never thought I'd be so excited about a board meeting. So, um, all right. Uh, we, we all feel the same way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knew, right? <laughs> so, all right. Um, is there any other questions or comments before we call it a night? No. I just think it's amazing, amazing teamwork. Um, I think Gary hit it this morning when I was talking to him. We were preparing for something and we didn't know what it was, but we were here and we were prepared. So, and the community stuff is in the, the meals and the bus donations that Dan talked about. It's just over the top. And I think looking backward, we will be, we will have been successful and we'll be, we'll be looked at by the media and others as successful. And it's just a credit to everyone. So it's just amazing to be a part of it. So I, I think I'm most impressed with um, our role modeling for the students of our district. And um, when they're faced with crisis as, a, um, as they're growing into their adult lives, um, how resourceful of a district they've come from and, and how to approach um, difficulty without being fearful and, and, um, I think I was talking with Gary this morning when I was saying that I'm so amazed that we we could have been afraid. We could have um, regressed to how we were years ago, but instead we've um, we stepped up to the plate and we've turned what could be something awful into an incredible learning adventure, not just for students, but for our faculty and our community. So yeah. um, it really... Uh, it's it's a really scary, sad time, but it's also a really amazing time. Yep. Super proud. Go, <laughs> go team. <laughs> Eagle pride, right? You got it. You got it. Thank you, everyone. I guess we're done. So. Thanks, guys. Uh, Have a great evening. I Have love how the backgrounds keep changing for people as you switch rooms. <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.